the transform gizmo. The transform gizmo is really, really cool and really important to understand in ZBrush. Whichever object you currently have selected, the transform gizmo is locked to that object. If I try and move this object, it's locked to that. So that's why it's moving from here and it's scaling from here and it's rotating from here. Um, if it, were, it is remembered for its position for each object. So if I change over to this object, it remembers it's here. And for this object, I had placed it here. So it will remember that, allowing us to have a lot of control over what we do with these objects. By Alt and clicking anywhere on your object, it will align to the surface normal of that object. And I'm just holding out Alt to click and change object and Alt once more and click to actually align the gizmo to that surface normal. We can do that as often as we like. And as I said, it will remember that the next time we go to that object and it will take a second click in order for it to move it somewhere else. So to go back to this object here, holding down Alt decouples this gizmo from its position on the, on the object. Right now it's locked here. If I hold down Alt, you'll see that this lock icon opens up and allows me to move this gizmo to somebody somewhere else or to rotate it. And once I've done that, when I let go, this is now our new location for the gizmo. So holding down Alt will allow me to temporarily move this or hold down Alt and click will actually move it, aligning it to the surface normals, as I said. Um, so this is a really important functionality to get used to. You'll basically be using the Alt key an awful lot as you're moving around and, and changing the position of your gizmo. Um, what will happen at times is that you will have rotated your gizmo because you need it in a certain place in order to perform a certain function. And then once you do that, you want to reset the gizmo. The button right beside this will reset the mesh orientation, but it's important not to hit this without realizing that it's still coupled to the object. So if you wanted the cube to be reset, we're resetting this to the world orientation. That's what this is doing. So if I reset this while the cube is still locked to this, when I hit this, it's going to rotate the cube in its efforts to, re to reset this to the world orientation. I'll undo that. If instead I hold down Alt on decoupling the gizmo from this cube, so when I hit this, now it's going to reset the gizmo's orientation to the world, but it won't affect the box. So by clicking that, I've now moved that. So we now have reset that to the world orientation. I'll turn off perspective just for a clearer view. So you can see that that's now perfectly aligned to the world. Whose previous position was this. I hold down Alt and I click on this and I reset that. If I also want to reset that to the center of the object, um, I can hit this button here, this little map locator icon uh, and I don't need to hold down Alt for this because holding this will always just reset to the center of the object. Had I masked a certain area of the of the tool and hit this, it will go to the unmasked mesh center. So it's going to look at this area here that's unmasked and say, well, that's the center of this. If I mask even more, say that's the center of the remaining area. So this will always respect masks. I'll remove the mask by hitting control drag on the keyboard. If I want to move this to the center of the object, as we said, we move it here. We hold down Alt and click on this to make sure it's aligned to the world. But at some time, you'll want to move your gizmo back to the uh, axis, the center axis. This is effectively the zero, zero, zero of the world. Like, So if you hit this button while it's unlocked, you'll be moving both the object and the gizmo to that. I'll just undo that. If I decouple this, I can move the... Actually, I just want to make this a little bit more... Uh, of an exaggerated change. This is the center of the axis. So if I hit this button on its own, I'll move that to, to there. If I let go of this, I'll move the gizmo to there. So by moving the gizmo, now we still have that control and we've, we've centered the gizmo onto the zero, zero, but we haven't actually centered the object. Sticky mode is uh, you, not particularly handy, to be brutally honest, but um, if you rotate around an object, um, as soon as you let go, the gizmo will snap back to its previous location. Um, or if you move, it will snap back. Move, it will snap back. This is useful for placing teeth and uh, hairs and stuff like that from time to time, but it's not hugely, you probably won't use it an awful lot, to be honest. The last object option in here, because we're going to ignore the customize button here, because this is just a, a whole load of deformers, which is a, a whole other demo in itself. But the last option here is the transpose. Um, you can either transpose one subtool, or if I click on this, it will show us three, and it's saying transpose all selected subtools. With this on, 
If I try and move now, it's going to move all of my subtools, even though they're separate objects. Um, if I turn it off, it will only move the currently selected object. So whichever one I currently have selected, that's the one that will be affected. By turning it back on, we have another couple of options. If I go to this tool and I mask this tool, and I go to any of the other three, and I go to move this, it's going to respect the masking that was on that object at that time. So even though it's saying move everything, it's seeing that this is masked and saying, okay, I'm not going to move that. If we partially mask that, and we go to another object and we say move, it's going to remember partial masks as well. It's trying to basically transpose as much as it possibly can. Anything that's masked, obviously, it can't do that. I'll just go back here and I will unmask that. The last part of this is the selection tool. So by default in ZBrush, when you want to select something, I'm on a single object here. I will do this and this will select certain faces for me. And if I hold down Control and Shift, like this, it will select, Control shift tap will clear, Control shift and Alt will actually do the inverse, will hide that, and Control shift tap will bring them all back again. So as part of that, if we have this selected and we hit Control and shift and we just select two other subtools, you'll see that these two subtools have now gone dark. So if I go to move now, it's going to move these two and it's basically said, yeah, you've selected these two, so I'm going to move them. This isn't a mask, this is using the selection techniques instead, and this is respected by the transpose tool. Control shift tap will bring, will invert. Control shift drag will bring them all back to the original, so you'd be moving them all back as, as one. As I said, the default is one sub tool at a time because normally you're just working on one at a time. Hope this makes sense.